Hey, how's it going? Oh, good. I have a Marksman Sniper Rifle Level 5 for oh, you. Oh, that's nice. There oh, you really? go. Yeah, really? it's it's in the box or in the bag right there. My name is Peter. I'm the Missionary Gamer. I live stream on Twitch. It's very nice to meet you. Sounds pretty cool, dude. Well, Jack, we like to ask people some questions on stream. I... Would, would you be up for some questions? Sure. What do you think happens when we die? Dang, that's a deep question. It's such an odd concept because it's kind of scary. I mean, what if like... But I feel like you get to choose depending on what religion you believe in and stuff. Like, every religion is right in its own sense or something. Like, I'm atheist, so I don't really have, I don't have a religion, but... So, as an atheist, do you believe in science? If you can prove something to me and back it up with facts, I'll believe it, basically. Alright, well, I'm gonna put you to the test on that. It is okay. scient- it is scientifically impossible for nothing to have created everything. I mean, I guess I agree. I don't know. So then that would mean you're not an atheist because an atheist position is that there is no God. So if there is no God, your only option then is to believe an unscientific premise, which is that nothing created everything. You have evidence of the creation because we're in it. So because you have a creation, you can know for a fact that there's a creator. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying there isn't a god. There could be a god. What's crazy about, like, how, like, if you look at, like, the size and the scale of the universe and, like, stuff that humans can't comprehend and stuff, like... Oh, I agree. Yeah, it's amazing. Crazy. It's absolutely amazing, yeah. which shows that if something created this, whatever it created had to be even bigger than this, right? So it had to have... Something so, something so big... Yeah. So like powerful. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're those are the Unpopular those are the qualities. So we've moved you to being an agnostic. Would that be a fair statement? I mean, sure, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. All right. Well let let's let's shift over to a different um, perspective, which is do you consider yourself to be a good person? Depends. Like because in real life, that's kind of the same thing. People have their different perspectives on what they believe is the right thing and what makes them a good person. Yeah, no, so, you, you you lay it out. So let's let's see if you can measure up to a standard that would be outside of our own subjective standard. In your lifetime, how many lies do you think you've told? I think I've told my fair share, you know. Fair share, okay. What do you call somebody who has told their fair share of lies. It depends. Is it like a white lie, like a good lie? If someone says, like, do I look fat? You want to be nice? That's not lying. That's discretion. If someone has lied, would you agree that would make them a liar? Yes. If you okay. lie, that technically means you're a liar. So understanding you've lied more than once. I suppose that would make me a liar. <laughs> exactly. Second question for you. In your lifetime, have you ever stolen anything... I've actually never. Never downloaded anything from the internet that you hadn't paid for? Oh, oh, that counts too? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, oh whoops, oh. yeah. Just because it's digital doesn't mean it doesn't have value. If you've stolen things, what would that make you then? A thief. No, it wouldn't. It would make you a lying thief. That is true. Next one, have you ever used God's name as a cuss word? I rare. well, I surprisingly never say like I don't say that. I more than say so. Okay, last question, and I appreciate you being willing to go through this. Jesus Christ said, you know it's said of old, that you shouldn't commit adultery. But I tell you that even if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. So have you ever looked at another person with lust? Well, okay. Yeah, ob obviously, I, I, you know. You've admitted, and this is not me judging you. This is you've admitted to being a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. Understanding that, let's say today was the day that you died in the real world, and you're standing before the God who created everything. Would he find you innocent or guilty of breaking his law? 
the thing no. is, God would theoretically be looking at my whole life. Yeah, your whole life. Is, All the sins. Human is perfect. I completely agree with you. You're speaking another biblical truth. God is love. But that's not all he is. God is also righteous. He is also a perfect judge. He is full of wrath, but he's also full of grace and mercy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Should he then, as a good and righteous judge, send you to heaven? Or should he send you to hell for breaking his laws? Well, I suppose... Because isn't hell kind of meant for the worst of the worst? Like, you know, constant sin after sin after sin but the reality is jack if we're honest we have broken his commands thousands of times and so we deserve an eternal punishment actually just for one sin that's that's pretty horrifying the question jack is does that reality concern you i mean yeah kind of in the back of my head i'm like yeah if Chris, if the christians are right I don't want to go to this place. It sounds like it sucks. Now, that's good because that shows you that you value your life. And there is good news. God sent a savior. His name was Jesus Christ. He was born miraculously of a virgin. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned, not even once in thought, word, or deed. In fact, everything he did was perfect and pleasing to his father in heaven. And so when he went to the cross, he went there as an innocent man. See, he claimed to be God. And when he went to that cross, he didn't just die. God the Father showed up and poured out his wrath on Jesus Christ for our sins, for every sin we've ever done and every sin we ever will do. He paid the penalty for our sins. He said, it is is finished and then he died and he was buried in a tomb but then something miraculous happened three days later do you know what it is he came back yeah he came back from the dead this proved that he was who he said he was god himself it also proved that he can back up that statement when he said it is finished he can do that because he's god he was seen by his disciples he was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses over the course of 40 days, and then he ascended into heaven and right now is seated at the Father's right hand. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So here's my question, Jack. Do you believe it's the truth or am I lying to you? I mean, you said Jesus said this and you say he's never committed a sin in his entire life. So I guess I'm going to have to believe it's truth. So then comes the next question, Jack. When are you going to I'm repent even, and trust in him? I'm not even joking. I want to have like a baptism or something before I die just to wash away my sins. Just in case there is a God. I never said baptism washes away your sins. That never came out of my mouth. You don't you don't get baptized because it saves you. You get baptized because God saved you. Past tense. Jack, do you know the day that you're going to die? I mean, no, I could die tomorrow for all I know. Yeah, there's some urgency here. What's up with the whole um like the the scrolls the scroll to the apocalypse? I played Far Cry right. 5 and I have no clue. Don't, don't base any of your philosophy on video game uh, genre. I, I get you. Will you go read the Bible? Will you read the book of John? Will you find out for yourself if these things are true? Sure, I'll read a few pages. Jack, would it be okay if I prayed for you? Would that be all right? All right, sure, man. All right. Heavenly Father, I am, I am grateful for Jack uh, being willing to talk about these things. He started off with, with not even believing you were real. Now he understands there is a God. Now he knows the truth about his standing before you, Father. But he needs that, that gift from you of faith, that he might repent and put that faith and trust in your son and be saved from the wrath to come. I pray you'll save him, Lord. And I thank you for this opportunity. I pray this all in Jesus Christ's name, my King and Savior. Amen. Amen.
Jack, it has been a pleasure. You've been very, very thoughtful, and you will be in our prayers. All right. Thanks, man. You have a blessed day.